Okay, here's how to set up and tune the Bob PID. Once you've built the Bob PID servo controller, the next thing you're going to need to do is connect to it and tune it. So uh, when you do that, you need to make an electrical connection via one of these little gizmos. This is, uh, of course, this is just a USB extension cable, and then this is a uh, serial USB to TTL adapter. Uh, and you'll see that there's, you know, the pins are on this end. They're labeled. You won't be able to see them there, but they are. And this cable right here is going back into the Bob PID. So on the Bob PID board, you'll see this connector here. Now let me just focus this real quick so that you have a better chance of actually seeing it. Oh, and I've got it upside down. Okay, so there's J2 right in the middle. See this? J2 for RLC or FTDI. And you can see just above it the pins. Quick focus again. Are labeled. This one over here on this side, the first pin, is labeled RX. And then the next one is TX and minus, which is, of course, ground. And then uh, clear to send, which we probably won't use, and plus, because you can put plus 5 in there if you want to. Now, RX and TX are, are horrible names to use. RX, of course, for receive and TX for transmit. But it's receive and transmit relative to what? So on this, I don't know if you can see that, but under the RX, I have a little arrow drawn, drawn away from the hole, so away from the pin, uh, indicating that the signal is going to come out of that pin, away, out of that hole. And then next to TX, the arrow is drawn pointing into the pin, meaning that we expect a signal to come in there and be driven. So we're using RX and TX from the point of view of the host, which is what how they're labeled on most of these uh, USB adapters. Um, unfortunately, this pinout has RX and TX swapped from the FTDI standard. So if you use an FTDI cable, just know that RX and TX have to be swapped to hook up here. Uh, but in general, once you have that connected, and once the camera is refocused correctly, you need to um, you need to run some kind of a serial program on your PC. Um, so if you happen to have the Arduino program, your standard uh, Arduino program, you can go in here to Tools and go to the um, Boards or Port rather and then switch that to a particular port. I think I'm off screen there so let me just move that up a little bit. So you're going to Tools, Port and you're going to switch it to the particular COM port that um, that your USB device has installed as. Now hopefully there's only one in there, so you'll only have one in your particular system. And then you pull down the Tools menu and go to Serial Monitor, um, and you want to set 38.4 as your baud rate. So you have this little pull down here. You just want to set it to 38.4. And then up here in the top, you'll be able to send commands to the unit and get a command back. Now. What should happen when you power this thing up is that you should get a uh, a nice little kind of a welcome screen, which I will simulate here. Now you you would power up the Bob PID, and when you do, you should see that on the screen. And the text is kind of small there; it's a little bit hard to read. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to switch back to another program that I like better. Uh, but before I leave the Arduino one, let me just show you real quick. You have to put in, when you put in a command, you have to put it in up here at the top, and then you hit send, and it sends it. Okay? So that's how you send something to it. You'll have to hit send, or you'll have to hit enter uh, every time you, you send the command when you're using this particular Arduino um, IDE program. So I'm going to switch off that COM port so it's no longer in use. I'm going to come back here and open up the COM port on this other program, which is one I really like. It's called Realterm. Um, and basically you're going to see when you power up, uh, you'll see the bootloader message, and then you'll get this nice uh, message from the Bob PID saying that it's alive and well. Now, if you don't see that, 
check your wiring, make sure that you have all your settings correct. On real term here, you can see you set the baud rate. Parity is in, 8, and 1, your standard settings. Make sure your hardware and flow control are turned off. Um, and then you have change in order to change your port settings and make sure that this open button is pushed down. So if the open isn't down, you see how it can be up or down? Uh, if it isn't down, then you won't actually get anything. Okay, so once you have that um, all set up, then you can start trying to send commands to the Bob PID, and the, the obvious one to send is a question mark, because that gives you back that whole status response. And uh, again, if you don't see that status response, then you know that you know something's wrong. You can check the wiring, uh, make sure that your flow control settings are correct, you know that sort of thing. Okay, so uh, once you have communications with the Bob PID. Uh, let's take a look at what it tells you. So first off, it shows you know tells you what it is and it tells you the version of the firmware. Now this this nice readout is only available in the 0.95 version of the firmware. So if you have a prior version, uh, you're going to need to bootload in a new um, set of firmware, and I'll cover that in a different uh, training session. This error right here is showing you the error on the motor shaft. So if I go down here and move this just a little bit and hit question mark again you'll see that it's showing a different value there so that's just showing you how far off the motor is from where the bob pid thinks it should be okay so the bob pid is looking at the encoder right here on the back shaft of the motor and it's telling the the um it's telling the bob pid where that particular thing should be. I'm going to go ahead and lower this camera just ever so slightly because I want to make sure that you can see the end of the shaft there. Got a little marker on it so you can watch it spin. Uh, okay, so at that point, um, this next line is all of the current settings and it's kind of a reference to the commands that you can provide. So Here's your P term at 0.2 P, and you'll notice that the number comes first, and then what the setting is or the command. So your your P term or proportional gain is 0.2 at this point. And then here's your integral term, here's your derivative term. Now S is the step multiplier. So you know how you have a microstepping mode uh, in a stepper motor driver that you can set. This is sort of the same thing. What this means is that when the motion controller, which is a GRBL here, sends a single step pulse over to the PID controller on this line here, the PID controller is going to, at this point, count that as being two ticks on the encoder. Okay, So we can change that. And you can change any of these settings basically just by typing in what you want the new value to be, let's say 4, and then you type the letter, and that makes the change. And if we hit question mark we can see that it's now 4s instead okay now this uh, v value here 10v so what that's saying is that when we enter a new value to move to here on the terminal it will move 10 clicks per 200th of a second so that's a setting that's describing the velocity that we're going to move at okay then uh, 286w that setting is deciding the direction. That's whether we're going clockwise or counterclockwise. And that's an important setting. You'll see that in just a second. And then this 50W is saying that we are not following the enable signal from the um, motion controller. So the driver over here will not be enabled based on the motion controller. Uh, this last one it's saying uh, 321w to save. It's it's just that's warning you that we haven't saved these particular settings here. Okay. So uh, the first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and send an E to enable it, but we're going to be ready to hit a space really quickly in order to stop it. So we send an E, and what you'll notice is that the motor shaft spins, and we spin the wrong direction, the error increases instead of decreasing, it hits a maximum, and then it says, hey, we're at maximum error, try 216W. So let's just do that. We'll go ahead and put in 216W. And what that does is it just reverses the direction. So now it's going to try to go in the 
opposite direction um, on the motor. Um, you may notice that 2 kind of looks like a Z, the 1 kind of looks like an I, and the 6 kind of looks like a G, so that could spell out Zig if you were looking at it in a crazy way. And that might spell out zag if you were looking at it in a crazy way. So it has to do with whether the motor should zig or zag um, when it tries to turn it to the correct location. So now that we've corrected the direction, um, and we'll just go ahead and verify that. See, now we're on 216. So now we're going to go ahead and enable. And you'll see that the motor comes up and does not go crazy. And I want to just show you that if we try to turn the shaft, it is resisting me and will not allow me to turn it past a certain point. Now, uh, a lot of times what will happen when you're first tuning a PID is that you'll end up with too much drive. So let's just go to 1P here real quick. And there. What you notice is that the motor just started vibrating crazy, and I hit the space bar in order to stop it. So that's a little bit too much drive. And this motor is really small and really light, and it has no mass attached to it. So it can really go crazy uh, at, at a very high frequency when it has too much drive. So what you want to do when you're tuning your PID is you want to start with a very low drive like this and what you'll notice is that you may be able to turn it off center just a little bit but it won't vibrate on you. Okay. So now what you can do is you can start increasing your P and as you do that you'll start finding that you're getting you know better control and at some point as you continue to increase it that gets better and better until eventually it will start vibrating again okay uh, and so when you're doing that the other thing that you can do is you can send commands to tell it to move a little bit so I can say let's go to 100 you see how it gave a little little tick there this particular encoder that we're using is the 4000 click per revolution so 100 is very small Let's do a thousand instead. Let's do ten thousand instead. Right. Okay. You'll notice our velocity is fairly low there. We can increase our velocity if you want to. So now if we do that same ten thousand, it'll get right up and move there. And you see we have pretty good drive as well. Okay. Now, the I term right now I have set really, really, really low, um, and that's because there's almost no inertia on the shaft. If this were actually connected to something that was fairly large, we would want to bump that I term up to something a little bit higher. In this particular case, bumping it up is probably going to make it vibrate. Well, maybe not. Oh, I should also mention you can go backwards, obviously. You can go backwards with. 10,000. Oh, there we go. So I just hit the space bar real quick to get it to stop. And you can see why we want that I term really low. And again, that's because there's almost no mass on this particular motor. Okay. Oops. I don't want to do that. I need to enable first, and then I can go minus 10,000. Okay. So you get the idea. What you're going to want to do is play around with these numbers, especially uh, starting off with the P slowly increasing it. Uh, if you have a, a large mass or something that's really heavy attached, you're going to want to start bumping up the eye a little bit. And then um, if you find that your, your accuracy is really low, what you can do is you can try for a higher P and compensate for the vibration by increasing the D term just a little bit. Okay, So one thing that you'll notice is it's constantly bugging us to save. It's saying, hey, do the 321W. Uh, and that's because we've made changes since the unit has started. So we're going to go ahead and do a 321W. And then when we hit enter, or when we hit question mark, rather, you'll see that it doesn't continue to bug us. Uh, those settings have now been written into the double EEPROM on the Bob PID. And the next time it powers up, it'll automatically be in that mode. So now the next thing to do is to get it ready to actually accept commands from the motion controller. And the way that we're going to do that um, is by changing that 50W into a 60W. So you'll notice that 60 kind of looks like go, um, and once you're ready to actually go, then you can do uh, 60W. And what that means is that the enable command 
or the enable wire from your motion controller will now be respected by the bob pit. So when the motion controller says, hey, drive the motor, that's the same thing as hitting the E command here in the terminal, um, it'll go ahead and drive the motor. So that way you don't have to be connected to it. You don't have to hit the E command in order to tell it to enable. Uh, the, the motion controller can enable the motor or can enable the bob pit um, directly via a wire. So we did a 60W. Uh, you'll see that it's made that change, uh, but that it hasn't been saved. So we'll do a 321W and we're set up and we're ready to go. So just to make sure that we're clear on all of that, um, we've set our P, we've set our I, we didn't really play with the D, but you can. We've set up our step multiplier. Um, and this is something that you probably want to play around with a little bit with your motion control software actually running. So right now, I mean, I could send commands to the uh, GRBL, and that would actually make this thing move. Um, I'm not going to do that in this video. But we also have set our velocity, which is the, the velocity only has to do with commands that are entered here on the terminal window. The S command has to do with uh, step commands that come from the motion controller, from the external motion controller. So this is kind of internal motion commands, and this is kind of external motion commands. We change zag to zig uh, in order to get the direction right, so that the error would be decreased when the motor was turned in a particular direction. And we've changed the so to a go here with the 60W command so that the motion controller actually can fire up and run. And I believe that is everything that you need to know about tuning the bob pin. Thanks for watching.